Hello there, my name is Kate and I'm a member of the Data School's 30th cohort at the Information Lab in London. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add a highlight colour to one quadrant of a scatter plot dynamically. This can help you focus the user's attention on key points in the scatter plot and guide your user story. So let's jump right into Tableau and get started. OK, so here you can see I've started off by building a simple scatter plot using Superstore data. I've dragged some of sales onto the columns shelf, some of quantity onto the rows shelf, and then I've put customer name on the detail marks card, which means that each of these individual points on the scatter plot represent one customer's name, the quantity of items that they purchased, and the total sales generated from that customer. Let's say that I want to make it clear which of these customers are our best customers. So they buy the most products and they bring in a lot of money from sales. We could visualize this by adding a few average lines onto the chart. So let's go to the analytics pane and do that. We can select average line here. We want it to appear on the table level and we want it for both sales and quantity. So let's just drag and drop that. And now we have um, sort of four quadrants where this top right quadrant up here is now showing me these are the customers who buy an above average quantity of products and spend an above average amount of money. But we might want to make these customers stand out even more. And often the best thing for this is a splash of color. So I'm going to create a new calculated field in my data pane. I'm going to call this um, quadrant highlight color. Can spell. And again, what we want to visualize is those customers whose total sum of quantity is greater than the average of the whole table and the so total sum of sales to be the same thing. So what we can start off by doing is dragging the sum of sales from the columns shelf into our calculated field and saying that we want this to be greater than the average across this entire table. And to do this, we're going to use a table calculation. We're going to use window average. Here we go. And we want that to be the window average of the sum of sales again. Let's just drag and drop that. At the same time, we want the same thing to be true for our quantity. So let's also drag quantity into the calculated field and say that we want to see only those that are above average for the entire table. So we'll use window average again sum of quantity again. Just put that in there before we go. Let's move that over here. Great. So we can see that this has been added to our list of uh, fields we can use as a Boolean condition. We're going to drag that now onto color. And when we first drop and drag this, there's not going to be any change because it's saying that everything is false. So we need to go into our table calculation now from this calculated field, and we want to edit it so that we can make sure that it's all set up correctly. We can see that at the moment, because I've got my calculation assistance turned on, that for each of these individual points, if you can see, there's a little number one next to all of them. And we can see that table across is highlighted here. So this means that each customer is only being compared to themselves and it's being done across the table. We want to select specific dimensions and then customer name so that each customer name is being compared to the rest of the customer names in the chart. And now we can see that our color is looking much more how we would expect it to look. We can now check that this is working dynamically as we want it to by adding a filter on and seeing how this changes. So let's put category on filter and show this. And now we can see that when my selection changes, the average lines also change and so does the coloring. So this is working as we want it to. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you now feel more confident in using this dynamic quadrant highlight. Please check the description of this video for links to additional materials that you might find useful. And if you enjoyed this video, you might be interested in some other how-to videos that we've suggested by my fellow data schoolers. 
you can click on the thumbnail on the bottom right to watch one of these next. And finally, you can subscribe to this channel to get notified when we release new videos.